Hi, and welcome to another episode of Great Handyman's Home Remodeling Videos. In this episode, we're going to call this Redressing a Bathroom Faucet. Starting with the drain, you can see that this thing has corroded to the point where it just cannot be salvaged anymore. So now it not, must be replaced. And if we're going to replace that, we might as well replace the overflow because it's starting to corrode as well along with these handles and the tub spout and we don't like the clear plastic handle so we're going to replace it with a metal one. Now you don't need to go completely into your tile to do this. The housing that's in the wall, there's nothing wrong with it and if there is you can change the stems to make it work just like new. Here's what we found, a universal trim kit for a Delta shower which means it's going to come with parts and options that you can or cannot use depending on your faucet but you can see probably that it comes with a metal handle and a crystal clear handle and we're going to switch to the metal handle and a new tub spout and all the adapters that come with that and a new overflow with a tub drain with an adapter for that so we're going to show you how to redress your bathroom faucet now And now for the drain itself, you should just take a pair of needle nose or a pair of pliers and stick them in there and then take a pair of channel locks for leverage. You should be able to twist this right out of here. Once you get it started, you should be able to do it with just one wrench. Now this might get kind of gross. There might be hair and all kinds of stuff that comes up with this. So don't be surprised. There we go. And sure enough, a bunch of nasty. I don't want to show that on camera very long. This is plumber's putty that was put in to stop any leaks from happening between the metal and the tub. Now that I've got most of it, I'll take a little bit of tissue paper and clean this up. The new drain has a rubber washer on it, so there's no need for plumber's putty, which just oozes out and makes a mess anyway. Also, uh, they don't know, see this one doesn't fit the threads. They don't know if uh, you have the smaller tub drain or the larger, so they send an adapter with this. going to need the adapter for this one. Put that on nice and tight and it will tighten up even more as we put this in. And then gently screw this down. We're just reversing the, the pattern. We're going to put our wrench back in. bump it a little bit with our channel locks. There we go. 
Then we'll take the new stopper and you can see probably how this works. When it's down, when it's just down right now, this slides in and the threads will turn. When it's up, there's a notch right here that allows this to spin. So, we put it in, we install it until it's tight. And we bump it just a little bit so it stays tight and so the user doesn't accidentally unscrew it. Then we lift up on it and it just pivots on that little notch. Now it's open, now it's closed. And that's how simple it is to change one of these drains. Okay, now we're going to change the overflow plate. This one has a single hole in the middle. Yours might have two screws, one on each side. And I want to show you here in just a second, when I remove this single screw, why it's a single screw. To begin with, it doesn't have that lever for the tub drain because it has a different type of drain. But you can see that this particular overflow has a center screw hole. So this one has to be a center hole type. If you had a hole here and here, you could switch to the center hole by using one of these adapter plates and you screw it on each side and as you can see, it puts a threaded hole in the middle for a single hole plate. But we're not going to need that in this case. Here is the new plate. It's got this little indentation back here. That's in case the tub does fill up too much, the water has a chance to come up and into this pipe which then goes down to the drain. We want to make sure that this open area is straight down. We've switched screws, we've gone with a brand new one and this one is Phillips. So we're going to have to switch screwdrivers to attach this one. just before it's tight, I point this downward. Now this needs to be snug. It's what pulls that drain pipe forward and makes a good seal so it doesn't leak in the back of your tub, but all the water that comes up too high goes down the pipe to the drain. So make sure you tighten that really well. As you can see, our replacement spout comes with several parts because the manufacturer doesn't know your configuration. He doesn't know if you're going to need the extension or the larger threaded adapters to make this thing work. And of course, we're going to need Teflon tape. So let's take this one apart and see what we're going to need to replace it. Okay, tub spouts are usually put on two different ways. One, they're screwed on with threads. And the other one is there's a notch underneath here that an Allen wrench would reach up into to loosen it and then it would just pull off. This particular one is a threaded on. So we're going to take our wrench and we're not concerned about scratching it because we're getting rid of it. We're replacing it. So just need to get our wrench and give it a nice twist. That gets it started. And you can see how it's corroded under here, it's turning green, it's just time for it to be replaced. And we'll slowly unscrew this. There we go. And as you can see, it's got the back piece here. This is not going to fit. So, let's see what we can do about that. Yeah. We're going to have to get a male threaded piece and solder on right here. 
to make this work properly or buy a different tub spout but uh, a copper piece that I solder on is going to be a lot less so uh, I'm just going to wait and get one of those pieces solder it on and then it'll be threaded and I'll Teflon tape it and screw this on and then caulk it so we won't need any of the parts that came with it except the Teflon tape we don't need any of the adapters or anything because in here are threads for half inch pipe and we're going to solder one on right here we can't do it now we have to go to the store but uh, that's how you do a tub spout if you need to of course I would take all this caulking off and make it clean and then recaulk it so we're going to move on to the faucet okay the faucet plate that went here is missing but if it was there we would have pried it off with a screwdriver and we're going to take this screwdriver and we're going to release this center screw which is going to release that clear handle now the water is on to the shower still so just be careful you don't turn it on you'll get yourself all wet see how that just slides off two screws holding this plate now if your shower is leaking because of the valve this valve can be replaced you simply buy a new one this one is Delta so you would buy a new Delta valve and then you would have to turn the water off to the shower if you don't have valves that turn off the water just to the shower then you're going to have to turn off the water to your entire house once the water is off um, in the lowest level open up a faucet so all the water pipes can drain open up a faucet upstairs so the water pipes can breathe and that's going to clear most of the water out of the pipes then when you unscrew see this is a ring right here you would unscrew this ring pull this cartridge out put a new one in and then tighten the ring again and then turn the water back on because the housing inside there's nothing wrong with it it's fine the way it is there's there's nothing in here to fail so as long as they make replacement parts for these uh, you don't need to bust out your tile or go in from the back or whatever it is you guys have come up with to, to fix these. You just need to go buy new parts. And if you can't find it at your box store like Home Depot or Lowe's, then go to a plumbing specialty shop. Uh, there's been times, especially in this old city, that I've had to go to a specialty shop because they just don't carry that brand in the box stores. So... We're going to proceed with redressing this as soon as we get this blister pack open. Okay, here comes the new plate. And first, we can make sure that this ring is going to fit. It fits just fine. It looks better already. Put this plate up here. because we're switching handles it's going to need this adapter for the metal handle and we're going to put the screw that normally would hold the handle to hold the adapter
and then the handle, and there's a set screw that goes in right here and up into the adapter. go and it's all brand new replacing a shower arm or gooseneck is not that hard either start by simply removing the shower head or whatever it is you have attached it could be a wand or just a head or it could be a double head or it could be a, a little switch that on and off water there's all kinds of variations, but whatever it is, take it off until you just have the gooseneck showing. Take channel locks because you're not worried about marring it or boogering up the threads and unscrew it. This one's pretty tight. There we go. Now I can finish it by hand. And this is your standard 6 inch gooseneck shower arm. They also make an 8 inch shower arm if yours doesn't quite stick out far enough. We'll take our new shower arm and we're going to put Teflon tape on the threads. None of these threads are going to show. They're going to be back in the wall. So I start off way in the back here and I make sure that I cover the threads two or three turns. I can't see back there if it leaks. I won't know until there's damage downstairs. So I make sure that it's coated really well with Teflon tape. Gently thread it in. You don't want to cross thread this. That will cause leaks. You'll feel it catch. And it's going to get tight. Now I don't want to put my channel locks on the outside of this. It'll mar and scratch it up. Just put something in the center. Like this is a screwdriver. You can use a handle of a wrench if it's small enough. But stick it in here and that will give you some leverage and you can bring it around to where you need it to be. Take your scutcheon ring, get past the threads and gently push it up. It should be a nice tight fit. It doesn't need caulking behind it to make it stay in place. Now we need to add our shower head, but before that, we want to Teflon tape it. Now, some of these threads will show the threads in the rear. So I'm just going to Teflon tape what's up front here, and I'm going to go around at least three times thickness. Alright, we have a new shower head and it has this yellow warning label on it that says hand tighten only. So I don't want to put a wrench on this, but I don't want to take this label off after I install it. I want to take it off right now. Oh, it's a sticker. Oh, I wish they wouldn't do that. That's going to leave sticky residue on my metal. And I'm going to hand tighten this. And this shower head has three basic settings. And quite frankly, that's all anybody needs is three basic settings. A full, a stream, and a combo. Um, anything else I'm not sure anyone needs. 
So there we go. That's how to replace the gooseneck. It's really easy to replace all these parts. Um, the only trouble spot I'm having is the tub spot where I'm going to have to solder on an end cap. But uh, if you had to, if you didn't know how to solder or couldn't solder, you can go back to the store and get a different tub spout that matches the one that you took off. So take the old one with you and just find a match for it. That's going to wrap it up for this short version of Great Handyman's Home Remodeling Videos Redressing a Shower Faucet. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon.